An Onihunga church and the daughter of a homeless man who died on a park bench have called for shelters to be opened in every suburb in Auckland to protect the city's vulnerable from winter. And as we're going to report later in the program, it is cold even as far north as Auckland. It comes after the Auckland City Mission made a desperate plea for help and Tapuia Marae prepares to open its doors for its second winter. So why are people living on the street and who is helping them and what are their lives like? Our reporter, Zach Fleming, and our cameraman, Bradley White, went to find out. 57-year-old Keith Johnson died on this bench 10 days ago. It wasn't just the bench at the St Peter's Anglican Church Cemetery in Onihanga, though. Since 2012, it was his home. And there, just by chance this afternoon, we came across his daughter, Cannon. She's 29. I saw Dad probably two weeks before he passed away in the hospital. And I took him some clothes. And I said, I'm giving you these clothes early, Dad. Your birthday's coming up. So don't lose them. Yeah, because his birthday would be this month. Keith was an alcoholic, but according to everyone I spoke to this afternoon, he was a happy one, not a violent one. Mistakes and bad choices led him to his bench. I just noticed that his sense of time during the day, whether it was three in the afternoon or three in the morning, he just had no concept of time. That's when I, I knew that his mind, that, that's when it started to break my heart. His mind was going because of the drinking. And help was offered, sought and accepted. Cannon says Keith had been in and out of rehab, several rehabs. But it was always a plaster, she says, not a cure. There's no real aftercare. It's too easy for, you know, people like my dad just to, you know, have like a bad thought or a bad moment and then, you know, he's, my dad like vodka, he, you know, go and buy that bottle of vodka and and then just, you know... It, you relapse. Yeah, yeah, relapse. And especially with, um, you know, street people, like street alcoholics, it's, there's no real support there for their addiction, I guess. You know, everyone's trying to change the homeless epidemic thing, whatever it is, um, by putting them into housing, but that's not the main part. And that's exactly what support services have been saying for years. Homeless people don't live in vacuums. For many, the absence of a home is the most visible problem, but not necessarily the most pressing one. Tama is 35 years old and has had several stints on the streets. He was Keith's friend. Even looking over there is kind of hard for me because that's where the bro always used to be. The bro, you mean Keith? Yeah, Keith, hard. Like right there in the corner, and then there was Ricky, and then Cedric. Tama is pointing at a block of public toilets around 100 metres away from Keith's bench. He says around half a dozen men sleep in the alcove just inside the toilet block every night. Tama has slept there before himself. Rolled up sleeping bags and blankets serve as proof. Quite a few of them like do have fun, but it's just that they can't stay there because the landlords are trying to be like, ah, uh, you know. Not allowed to do this, not allowed to do that, so... Thomas says he's known men who couldn't afford big enough rentals, so they sleep on the streets, too scared to upset their landlord with over-occupancy, while their girlfriends and children keep warm and sleep inside. Tama became friends with Keith during a homeless stint of his own. Got jumped in the park and broke my arm because I was at Mahi, and then because I was at Mahi, my boss was like, oh, bro, you, you can't drive a forklift with your arm like that. And then problems with wins led him back to the streets, but not for much longer. I'm going to win. And win? What do you mean, win? Like, next week or the week after, I'll be back in the house. Like, I've got a house lined up. Yeah. And you. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for it. Straight up. That house is courtesy of the New Hope Fellowship Church in Onehunga. It offers budgeting, counselling, food, and a gym where people can hang out and stay out of trouble or where the homeless can shower. Keith went there often. We provide towels, um, you know, shampoos, anything they need to refresh themselves. And if they want a cup of tea or coffee or something to eat, we'll provide that as well. Yeah, or just a chat even. Yeah. How, exactly. How, how many people take advantage of it? I think most of the guys that are out there have come in at least once or twice. Peter Wilson runs the gym. A bodybuilder, he says Keith was his mate. 
Today, nearly a fortnight after his death, Pisa was still talking about his friend in the present tense. Keith comes in here a lot, a lot of the time and um, yeah, whether it's just to talk. I mean, we'll talk about life, we can talk about anything. So, it's, you know, he's a very talented man. A lot of people don't know he's a very talented man. I mean, mechanic, he was a surfer, I heard, and a um, bit of everything, really. Pisa knows most of Onihung is homeless. He says simple solutions will make a big difference. When it's stormy at night or, you know, when it's raining, um, it really does kind of give me nightmares. Not, not nightmares as such, just worrying about the guys and the girls out there. Because once you have a relationship with these people, you know, you, you have that connection. So uh, I reckon ev every... Um, Suburbs should have, especially where the homeless are, um, uh, uh, some sort of shelter for them um, to stay at night, keep warm, keep out of the elements. I mean, my friend Keith, he died out in the elements. He acknowledges, like everyone I spoke to today, that Keith and others like him have probably made some bad choices along the way. But he questions, like everyone I spoke to today, why that matters. Something Keith said that really kind of stuck to me. He said, Pesa, you know what I, all I want um, for people to do, I'm not asking for money, I'm not asking for this or that, I just want them to treat me as a human being. That's it, I mean, isn't that what we all want? And for us as a community or as a country, we really should be treating these people as a human being. For Checkpoint, Zach Fleming.